Hey YouTube, it's Sean, Griffin RC Planes. Hey, several of you guys have uh, asked for me to do a video about picking out a brushless motor. Well, this is not gonna, not gonna be that video, but this will be a video similar and will probably help some of you guys out a little bit. The OMP Edge 540 airplane I had for sale on uh, eBay, uh, congratulations to R. Huffines 13, AKA Randy, he won the auction. And this is gonna be his first time outfitting a plane with all the electronics. Well, this is my first plane, 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 airplane. <laughs> and I don't wanna see anybody go through the headaches and, and make the mistakes that, that I made when I was picking out a motor for this thing. You know, so my story is I, I ended up with this, this uh, airplane, not on purpose, but I'll, that's another story but I had the manual and it's awfully funny how the motor they recommend is an oddball size and they have all this information on where you can buy that motor at you know so they've got ties with the company that sells the motor or they're the same company and uh, you know the motors are always a, an oddball size what they had listed for this one is they said they used the 4250 720 kV on a 4S system. 4S is the four cell LiPo battery, the 14.8 volt, and 4250 is the size of the motor, 42 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters long. And I didn't even know what that was at the get-go. <clears throat> and the 720 kV is the RPMs per volt. That's the simple way of it. You know, so if you have a bigger battery, you're gonna get more RPMs smaller battery less rpms so so i'm trying to figure out what to buy and how i figured out what to get after i made a few mistakes was i started looking at the exact motor that they were recommending and i was reading the the weight the size of it the power strength of it you know i i found the recommendation in the manual and then i went directly to the company that sold that motor and started looking at all the specs, and then I saw that it weighed about 250 grams, so then that told me, okay, we need to start looking for a motor that weighs about that much. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't have to be that exact same motor, <clears throat> because there's room under the cowl for a motor that's longer, or shorter, or fatter. It doesn't have to be the exact size that they recommend. On the OMP Edge 540, They've got this data plate or size, a VIN plate, it's really cool. But it has a motor size on it, and it's an oddball size. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna take the cowl off of this, and I'm gonna show you how I have the motor spaced away from the firewall using standoffs. And standoffs is just a fancy word for some washers, you know, or something to space it away from the firewall. Gas motors use it, glow motors, electric motors. <clears throat> standoffs are perfectly fine. So, all that being said, going back to the Edge 540, we have a lot of choices of motors we can put under that uh, cow. So we don't have to try to find what they're recommending, which is gonna be pretty, pretty tough. So let me get this uh, cow off and I'll show it to you and, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here it is with the cowl off. I'll do a close up with my, with my other camera here in a second too, but you can see that the standoffs are perfectly normal and that you have plenty of room for different size motors. I'm gonna take this motor off and put another one on, so that's why the cowl was coming off anyways. And I wanted to show you guys for an example there. Now let's look at the, uh, at the OMP. Let me show you guys my uh, my battery tray also. One of the tough things with our planes is figuring out what you're gonna do about a battery. But I put in a sliding locking battery tray that came out of like, uh, I think it came out of an FMS, uh, um, oh shucks, or P51, I believe that's what it is. You get the sides and the tray, and then you just got to make yourself a box. Put your battery on there and lock it on in. 
Okay, here's an up close shot just showing you that the standoffs are perfectly normal and they're used all over the place. I've got a couple stacked behind there. You can also see right here that this particular plane was designed where you could slide the firewall back and forth and then glue it in place. And what I did is I slid the firewall all the way back and glued it. And that way I could, you know, th then I had the option to put all kinds of different motors on it. If I would have slid it forward, then glued it, you know, th then it, then I wouldn't be able to use, you know, certain motors. Now it's back as far as it can go and I can use standoffs to stand it out and so forth. I've had a couple motors on here. This is the Spectrum uh, 4250-800KV. This is a pretty good motor so far. This is one of the best ones I've had on here yet. Here's a close-up of the battery tray that I made. How it slides in and out, put your battery on it, and then slide it on in and lock it in. So we got the Edge 540 out real quick. I've got the cowl on it, screwed in place. It has a little bit of room to move it forward. You could probably drill four more holes and move the cowl out, I don't know, an uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter. But as it sits right now, from the firewall to the front of the cowl, where the backing plate of your spinner will be, We've got about two and three eighths. Get you guys a look at this too. Yep, about about two and three eighths is what we're working with. Okay, <clears throat> doing my artwork again. <clears throat> this red line on the left is the firewall. This line on the right is the cowl. That's our two and that's our two and three eighths rather. Roughly. Okay. So the 4250 motor is this one. This is what we stuck in the in the front of the hole with the cowl. You know, this is all ball ballpark, but considering the mount behind this motor, still got a little bit still still got you know I don't know, 10 millimeters or something and you can always get a prop adapter that's not as thick I mean there's different ways to do that this is a 4260 without the prop adapter on you can see a huge difference here you know if I put it all the way against the the line like you screwed the motor directly to the firewall then you got all kinds of room but considering the uh, you know considering the the motor mount the cross keeping all that you know in consideration there and then you still got room there so 4260 is doable now this motor here is a 50 series this is a 5065 so 4250 42 wide 50 long 50 wide 65 long Look at that That one would work too. This is the motor out of the uh, Draco very 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 powerful motor Now this one here the the 4260 this is a FMS uh, Oh the, the my biplane the, the pits This is the 550 kV No, no, this came out of the beaver the pits has a 400 but this would be a good good choice right here. If you're going to use a, a 6S battery, then this would be a good choice. Somewhere in this area, uh, 500 kV, four, 400 to 500. If you're wanting to do the 3D stuff, just more sport flying, you could do a 4S setup on a 800 kV. I'm not affiliated with these people at all. Maybe one day I'll, I'll make a little money, but these people right here are good to deal with for motors. 
35 bucks for, for a good quality motor. Hobby Star, you can find them all over the internet. Now, the catch is they measure their motors by the inside, but in the description it will clearly say the outside. So, for example, uh, this motor in this box was actually a 4250, but they called it a 3520. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's a good place to go shopping. We got one last catch to this plane. I can't say that. This airplane plane, <laughs> the motor mount, the cross. The most common sizes that, that I deal with, and probably you guys deal with, this measures 35 millimeters this way, and then diagonal it measures 50. The holes in the firewall measure 41 across and diagonal 58. Now those are the holes that are already there. You're going to have to either do some, uh, do some shopping to find a mount that size that also has the, the holes uh, correctly for, to bolt to your motor. So those people at Hobby Star would probably be able to help you out with all that too. Or you're going to have to drill new holes or uh, make an adapter piece, you know, bolt something to the firewall with, with a different set of holes in it. There's, a, there's many options and that's, uh, you know, it's called model airplanes. That's part of the modeling, right? Well, I got a special box designed, uh, designed, designed just for this, and I need to go put this in it because I'm going to take it to UPS tomorrow morning. So I hope that helps uh, helps Randy out and helps uh, anybody else out that might uh, watch this. So, hey guys, I've said before and I'm going to say it again. Uh, uh, please subscribe if you haven't, and click the like button. That helps out the YouTube uh, algorithm. And that just uh, lets you two know that uh, you, you guys like what I'm putting out. And therefore, it, it is uh, shown to other people when they're randomly searching for airplane stuff. And then that causes the subscriber count to go up. When the subscriber count is going up, then that just makes me want to do this. This is a Friday night, and uh, no place other that I want to be is right here in this room and filling on my planes and making videos for you guys. So everybody's happy, right? I also noticed that we lost about 14 uh, subscribers in the past few weeks. So maybe accidentally you guys got uh, unsubscribed. So check on that. Okay guys, hey, thank you. Uh, our, our receiver programming, uh, I guess we'll call it the intermediate series, video uh, up this weekend. I got one more between here and there and, uh, and then it'll uh, then the, the session will start. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Happy flying. And uh, until next time, you'll see me here.